Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Hey, I am absolutely fantastic. How are you? Very good. I'm excited to speak with Dr. Amir Kafir. I think I said that right. Okay. He's got a book called Nonflict. It's like non-conflict, but it's nonflict. So I'm excited to chat with him and uh, find out all about that coming up later in the program. And if you stick around, you'll find out about it, too. Uh, take a listen to this. University of Washington study found that the price of low-calorie foods have increased 20% in the last 11 years. At the same time, high-calorie food costs have remained stable. So it's getting more expensive to eat healthy, Heidi. Ah. That's my excuse. It is good. It is expensive to eat healthy. I've but, said that all along. That's oh, a big yeah. part of the problem. Oh, it is a huge part of a huge problem. Uh, in Lodi, California, a grandmother and her daughter and some grandkids were all arrested after trying to shoplift $900 worth of stuff from a Target store. Oh. That's not good. No. So, like mother, like daughter, like granddaughter, apparently. So, And some other kids. So, that, that's too bad. Anyway, that happened in Lodi, California. Some special things are happening today. We'll tell you what that is in a bit. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I'm glad you asked. It's Thursday, June the 2nd. Today's my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Julie. It's also leave the office early day. National. Hey, hey I like Heidi, that. get back here. What you <laughs> no, you can't leave that early. Uh, National Bubba Day today. So if you know a Bubba, say uh, happy day to you. National Rotisserie Chicken Day today. And the most confusing one on the list it's Yell Fudge at the Cobras in North America Day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll ridiculous. say that again because I want to make sure I read that right. <laughs> Yell Fudge at the Cobras in North America Day. Huh. That's just bizarre stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, you got to wonder what brought on, on that. Uh... And, and somebody was so adamant that this was such a good idea, they fought to get it to become a national day. <laughs> that gets you know stuck on calendars like ours, so... If you see a cobra today, be sure to yell fudge at it. Uh, Maybe you can do it with your friend Bubba on National Bubba Day. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Do you like fun t-shirts? Our friends at 80s Tees have a bunch of fun designs from the movies and pop culture. This month, we are giving you a chance to win a $25 credit to buy the t-shirt you like with designs from Star Wars, Superman, Ghostbusters, Deadpool, and hundreds of others. Sign up to win a $25 credit. Register for free right now at winthisonline.com. We will select two winners at the end of this month. You could be one of them, but only if you register at winthisonline.com. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. A very bizarre story here. A 31-year-old woman has been charged after allegedly posing as a schoolgirl at a Canadian high school for three years. Ooh. Let me repeat her age. 31. Oh, my gosh. She was in high school for three years. I wonder what kind of skin cream she is. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, according to police, Trava Thornbury posed as Brianna Stewart at Evergreen High School in Vancouver. She played tennis on the school team and even attended the senior prom. Well, now the 31-year-old faces theft charges because the state paid $11,500 for her education. Here's my question. How did she do as far as grades? Did she do well? It doesn't say in the story, but I'd like to know. Because, you know, I would like to think when I was 31... I wonder why she went back. Did she not get her diploma the first time? I don't she know. Well, to go she back, was posing but, as but Brianna didn't Stewart. didn't want to be I don't looked know. at as an old lady or something? Um, she was posing she as someone else. clearly has a mental illness of some kind, so she needs some help. Her real name is Treva Thornberry, or Thronberry, but she was posing as Brianna Stewart. So I don't know if Brianna Stewart was an actual student, and she was saying, hey, I'll go to school for you if you don't want to go. Huh. I'm not sure. The story doesn't tell me all of that. All the Very story does tell me is that she was 31, and she was pretending to be a high school student <laughs> and that. got away with it. We got that. You know, not since Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future is that kind of thing possible. Wasn't he in his upper 20s when he was pretending to be Marty oh, McFly? Yeah. Or was it like, what, 26, 27? Something Maybe like they're that? on 21 Jump Street or something. Maybe she's an know. undercover cop. Could No, because she probably wouldn't have got a, a arrested and you know faced charges if she were with the police. <laughs> That's just bizarre. Again, a 31-year-old posing as a high school girl in Canada huh. has uh, now been arrested and charged. And they're uh, facing a, a fine of $11,500. So there you go. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. 
and this is your Brain on Drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. This is your brain on drugs. Duran Frank of Pennsylvania was brought into court recently on drug possession charges. While he was in the courthouse, Duran approached, was approached rather by a couple of police officers who were there to serve him with a warrant in a completely different case. When wow. he saw the officers, Duran became very nervous and blurted out that he had drugs on his person. Sure enough, officers checked him, and indeed, he had two grams of crack cocaine and some marijuana right there in the middle of a courthouse. That's fantastic. On the very same day, he was scheduled to go before a judge on drug possession charges. So I'm not sure what he was thinking when getting dressed to go to court. But, hey, you're not fully dressed without your crack cocaine and marijuana. <laughs> well, whatever additional time he's been given probably is not still enough because uh, that, that does not... Does that sound like something a sane person would do? Not at all. But, but if you were sane, you wouldn't have done it in the first place, and you wouldn't have been there in the first yeah. place. So. And here's my, my issue. Don't make we've, mistakes like we've that. We've talked about this same kind of thing now so many times. There, this isn't the only guy that does this. It happens a lot. No, it happens a whole bunch yeah. where they're wandering into the courthouse with what their drugs. What are you guys drugs. doing? <laughs> That's the kind of thing that happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Have you ever accidentally dialed 911? Yes. Uh, well, not me, but my... My kids have. So, and, and what usually happens when somebody accidentally dials 911? Uh, well, when our kids did it, I heard them talking to somebody on the phone, and I pick up the phone, and they're like, 911, 911, what's your emergency? And I panicked and hung up. <laughs> <laughs> did they call back? Yes, they called back. Yeah, so that's what's going to happen. They're going to call back. Well, in La Vista, Nebraska, uh, a guy and his girlfriend were hungry. She tried to call for delivery, but got the first three digits messed up and dialed 911. Now, instead of telling them of her error, she simply hung up. In cases like this, they call back. And if you don't answer. But they picked up the phone and hung up again. Well, then officers were dispatched, which would have probably been fine, other than the fact that her boyfriend was wanted on seven felony charges. Oh, my God. Yeah. So when they got to (laughs) their La Vista, Nebraska home, they got, you know, now they're saying, hey, what's going on? And no, nothing. It was a mistake. Well, now we got to check. Who are you? We need some ID. Mm. You know, because if if so, if you were being held against your will, the same kind of thing would happen. Sure. You, so, you remember the story of that really right. brilliant lady who called a pizza place to, or called nine one one and pretended like she was ordering a pizza. No, oh, yeah. So that they would know yeah. that she was in trouble. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so then she another lady ordered a did pizza, order a but pizza put it on there saying I'm being on held. Her th- yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Coming up, we've got your scoop of the day for a Thursday. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your Scoop of the Day. Middlebury College in Vermont has banned campus sales of energy drinks like Red Bull and 5-Hour Energy because of their alleged connection to high risk sexual activity. Now that's the first time I've heard that one. I know I've heard about it being bad for your heart. Have you heard that Energy drinks are bad for high-risk sexual activity? Is it because you can't get to sleep and you're like, well, I'm awake anyway? <laughs> Might as well know. have some high-risk sexual so activity. wired. And I'm not a fan. I tried up. some Red Bull and it tasted like medicine. Our yeah, daughter got like a monster it. energy drink. I tried that. It tastes like medicine. I'm like, why would you drink that on purpose? I mean, Yeah, they're really? gross. I don't even like to take medicine. And if you're into that kind of thing, nothing against it. Just, you know, it's not for me. Uh, over here, a new survey finds 84% of all Americans... Uh, adults anyway drink coffee either daily or weekly that's up from 80 percent 10 years ago so an additional four percent in the last 10 years and speaking of coffee if a warm cup of coffee is not quite what you need but the flavor of caffeine is go cubes i remember talking about these yeah when they were just a concept yeah now they're a thing they're chewable cubes made with cold brewed coffee two cubes equals the caffeine content of a regular cup of coffee so if you're saying, man, I'd like to have the coffee flavor, That's and I'd like a, a kick of caffeine right in my face, but I don't have time to drink that hot stuff. I'm going to just chew up these cubes instead. I'm not exactly sure what, what's going on where you can't just drink some coffee. <laughs> a Texas man was pulled over and handcuffed while driving around in a pink toy car. Oh. <laughs> 26-year-old David Schumacher was arrested on charge of credit card abuse while at the wheel 
of a, a car designed for children between the ages of 5 and 10. <laughs> um, at the time of his arrest, he was reportedly looking for a battery to power his Power Wheels <laughs> toy. There's a lot going on in that story, and I'm going to just move on. <laughs> uh, I just feel bad for that dude. You imagine when you're sitting in jail with all the other big burly guys. So what you, you in do? for? <laughs> Driving pink Power Wheels. Yeah, you're the one we're beating up tonight. Hey, a suburban Chicago woman is featured on dash cam footage recorded earlier this year driving down a street with a 15-foot tree lodged in her car's front grill. 54-year-old Mary Christie uh, claims that she, quote, didn't remember where she'd hit the tree. (laughs) But she just kept driving. Well, there's a tree in front of me, and I, I keep swerving, but it's still there. And it was sticking up out of her car. I remember seeing that. So they, uh, they charged her now. A common, uh, it's common knowledge that heart disease risk can be raised by smoking and by obesity and by your family history. I'm in trouble. Uh, now a study uh, adds something to that list as well. It's your blood type. Harvard researchers have found that people with blood types A, B, or AB have a higher risk of coronary heart disease than people with type O. People with the rarest blood type, type O, uh, or, I'm sorry, people with the rarest blood type, AB, were found to have the greatest risk. The lowest risk was for the people with type O blood, which is the most common, and it's found in about 43% of Americans. Uh, I have type A blood. Do you know what your type is? I have no idea. Red? Mine is I red. I thought I was O negative, but I'm... I don't know. I think you might be AB. That's the rarest. I think you have that. I don't know. It's red. I remember when you... you, you <laughs> it is cut. red. So you, you can't tell just by that? Laws strictly curbing school sales of junk food and sweetened drinks may play a role in slowing childhood obesity, according to a study that seems to offer the first evidence of such efforts could finally be paying off. The results come from the first large national look at the effectiveness of state laws over time. They're not slam dunk. Even obesity experts who praise the study acknowledge the measurements are a bit extreme, but they're saying by cracking down on uh, the access to all the yummy stuff in the schools, they're noticing that there is a bit of a decrease. Analysis of federal energy records finds that about once every four days, part of the nation's power grid is struck by a cyber or physical attack. Yikes. Again, it's once every four days. Does that concern anyone other than me? That's concerning. That yeah. is very concerning. So there's something going on, and I'm not sure that that's a good thing. So next time the power flickers, I'm really going to be worried. It's going to do it for your scoop of the day on this Thursday. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Do you like fun t-shirts? Our friends at 80s Tees have a bunch of fun designs from the movies and pop culture. This month, we are giving you a chance to win a $25 credit to buy the t-shirt you like with designs from Star Wars, Superman, Ghostbusters, Deadpool, and hundreds of others. Sign up to win a $25 credit. Register for free right now at winthisonline.com. We will select two winners at the end of this month. You could be one of them, but only if you register at winthisonline.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. We've got a special guest joining us from the other side of the world right now. We have Dr. Amir Kafir joining us, and he's an organizational uh, an organizational psychologist, and uh, he's also co-founder of Million Peacemakers and creator of the Nonflict Way. And we have Dr. Kafir with us now. Dr. Kafir, how are you, sir? I'm fantastic. I'm in Tel Aviv. It's sunny and beautiful. And I'm happy to be with you on this conversation. Now, let's talk about uh, one of the things that we just talked about there was the non-flict way. Now, that's a word I've never heard before. Is that a word that you guys created? That's right. The the word non-flict became the name of the book, The Art of Everyday Peacemaking, non-flict, a book that was created on the basis of work that I have done. And again, the book is called Non-Flict, The Art of Everyday Peacemaking. Yes. I co-authored this book with my friend Steve Hecht from Montreal, who was the initiator of the event that I did across Canada to train 750 leaders and their families on how to resolve conflict using the methodology I created. And the nice thing is, if, if we could all just get along a little bit better, the world would be a much better place, wouldn't it? No doubt. And, you know, we're all still going to be different people. And so the real question is, can we leverage and capitalize on the differences and build something that is more powerful than the uniformity that we would look for? Meaning that conflict is a desirable, indispensable element of good management and good creation. 
Now let's talk about Million Peacemakers, the organization that you guys have here. What is the the organization designed for, Million Peacemakers? So the agenda of this uh, organization that we have created is to train a million people around the world in this methodology that I have created where you can get people in the political, the social, the family, and the work environment, and the individual within themselves learning how to manage conflict in a constructive, proactive, desirable manner. And how is that going so far? Are you, are you pacing the way that you wanted to? Are you seeing more people joining or fewer people joining? It sounds like a great thing to join, so I'm hoping you're having some good success. Well, thank you. We have uh, actually been able to bring this to India. And in India, we have been associated with a media group called Sakal, who has launched groups of women that come together to look at how they can make a difference in their lives and in the environments in which we live. And they are running a business around an agenda of delivering change. And these women are within groups within the area called Maharashtra, which is around the Mumbai area. And by now, we already have around 120,000 women in these groups. And in addition, I've also trained university leaders on campuses in Maharashtra, where each and every one of them is responsible to launch a similar group where they will deal with delivering change for society and the quality of their life in the area. And we've already had 500 of those students. And this number multiplies by about 10 to 20 each holding a group of about 20 20 to 20 people. And by now, we've also brought this into Mexico. So now the group of women are already running in Mexico, and we now have it with kids who are part of street kids from broken homes who were taken under the umbrella of a new initiative by a wonderful lady called Elisa Salinas from Mexico called Sports is Your Gang where they take these kids off the street and teach them the methodology of how to converse after they train in Muay Thai. So we're growing, but we are ambitious, and we really want to make sure that we give our contribution as much as we can around the world. That sounds fantastic, and it sounds like you're doing a great job. Again, we're visiting right now with Dr. Amir Kafir, and he is a co-author of Nonflict, The Art of Everyday Peacemaking, also co-founder of Million Peacemakers, and uh, that's an organization that's that like we were just visiting about there that's uh, recruiting and, and bringing people in to, to help spread peace, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. Right. And peace at its broader sense, which means it's not just peace at the dialogue between nations in conflict, what we call identity conflict, but conflict of interest, conflict of styles, conflict of perceptions. Again, between yourself, between your family members, so very practical, simple dialogue structure, a construct of how to make sure that we hear each other well and that we come up with what we call a co-creation of a solution. Same thing for businesses where we know that people are going through some very painful conflicts on a regular basis that have a huge toll on productivity and quality of life. And, of course, at a level of family and businesses. Well, thank you again for doing what you're doing, and thank you for taking some time to visit with us. Where can we find a copy of the book, Nonflict, The Art of Everyday Peacemaking? Where can we find that? John, we are now on Amazon, and the book is obviously in the U.S., but also on Amazon around the world. Coming out soon in Spanish, already translated and published in Maharati in India, as well as in English in India. And we're in dialogue with Germany, so the best place would be to look for is, is Nonflict on Amazon, wherever you are. Well, Dr. Kafir, thank you again for joining us today, and thank you for taking time to chat. John, thank you for helping us promote this agenda that we hope will make an impact in this world for the better and will help
help people suffer less and leverage more differences. Again, if we all just do a little bit, we can be part of the solution instead of the problem. Precisely. Again, Dr. Amir Kafir, and he is the co-author of Nonflict, The Art of Everyday Peacemaking. It's available right now at Amazon. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll-free at 1-844-204-1055. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? On a baseball scorecard, E6 indicates an error made by the player in the shortstop position. Did you know that? I did not know that. I didn't know that either. Now we do. Hey, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? A 110-meter high hurdler jumper must jump 10 hurdles. So there you go. If you're you're running the 100 meters high (laughs) hurdle jumper... Uh, a hurdler jumper. That's hard to say. <laughs> that's, uh, anyway, ten hurdles. That's that's the moral of the story. Hey, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The largest U.S. city in area, Juneau, Alaska. It covers three thousand one hundred eight square miles. Los Angeles, by the way, is only four hundred fifty eight square miles. Just to kind of put that into perspective, Juneau, Alaska, three thousand one hundred eight square miles. Los Angeles, four hundred fifty eight point two square miles. Uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The international telephone dialing code for Antarctica is 672. Okay. So if you're going to call anybody in Antarctica, they probably only have like two numbers there, but there you go. And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Did you know it takes a week to make a jelly bean? No. I did not know that either. It takes a full week to make a jelly bean. And now you know because that. I like jelly beans. I do too. What's that your was favorite? your fun fact right here on the John and Heidi Show for a Thursday. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by RadioReallyWorks.com. I know you're listening to a podcast, but did you know the John and Heidi Show is also a radio show? And for those of you who have businesses, you should consider using radio to advertise your business. We can even help you create some catchy little jingles or amazing radio ads that will help pull people in. Get all the details or just learn more at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday, June the 2nd. Man, time is flying. Yeah, my is. sister, my older sister has a birthday today, which is just nuts because I remember when I was a kid, that usually meant, you know, summertime was here and, mm-hmm. you know, school was done and all that. So time flies, man. Hey, if you ever wonder why specific sounds bother you, there is actually a name for this. It's called misphobia. It is the hatred of certain sounds. It's a condition that causes people to feel irritated or even enraged or disgusted When they hear specific noises, scientists don't fully understand why specific noises frustrate misphobia sufferers, but early research suggests that hyperconnectivity between the auditory system and the limbic system, a part of the brain that deals with emotions, it could have something to do with it. According to Time Magazine, the top cringeworthy sounds are, should we start at number one or number five? Let's start at number five. Number five, knuckle cracking. Oh, I hate knuckle cracking. I just do that. That drives me insane. You and your sister. I've got this. Yeah, both of you and your hands are messed up. Both of you. Is that normal? You're supposed to be. Not at all. (laughs) Number four, nail clipping. The sound of fingernail clippers. That's a bad. That's a bad one for a lot of people. They don't like that. I'm I'm not gonna say it's doing it like in the living room or anything but (laughs) i used to have a guy that would do that at meetings i'm not even kidding it's gross like every meeting we'd be there and he'd be over there clipping his fingernails i'm like wow that's uh i've never seen anyone do that before at a meeting (laughs) never seen that before yeah never seen that done before number three nose sniffing so if if you're one that every time somebody sniffs that just drives you nuts you could be misphobic or misphoboniac or whatever this is called uh number two most annoying sound in daily life is gum chewing and I tell you, I've seen it where people, you know, they got yeah. that going, like where they're talking. That kind of drives me nuts. I don't even chew gum anymore because of that. I think I chew like a cow when I'm chewing gum. <laughs> so the I don't number one, chew it. <laughs> the number one sound on the list, soup slurping. So if you don't like it when people slurp their soup, that what could be What about cereal? That's not on there. I hate listening to people eat cereal. Oh, it's kind of noisy. Or eating potato chips. Oh. You know, so, I don't know. We'll have to throw this online at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show and add some others to the list. Which, which other things do you think didn't make the top five that should be there? Let us know. Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheeliter.com. 
If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWealtor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWealtor.com. Do you do the same thing every day when you get to work? I'm not talking about the work itself, but the other things. Do you always wear like a favorite tie? Do you always use a certain coffee mug? A new report says doing that can actually make you more productive and happier in your job, Heidi. Hmm. A new survey of over 1,500 people, most of them said they wore their favorite clothes to important meetings to make them feel more confident. Three out of four said they rewarded themselves with a snack, like a little bit of chocolate or something, for completing their least favorite job duties. Hey, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. If you gave me a treat every time I got all the junk done that I got to do, and you're like, hey, did you get it done? And you like shake a bag of Twinkies at me. Huh? Huh? You want some Twinkies? All you got to do is get that done. Might actually work. Anyway, <laughs> uh, do you do that kind of stuff? Are there things that... that uh, Not really. I do. Uh, I use the same mug every day. And there are times where I've got some big meeting coming up. I'm like, oh, I'm going to wear this. I, I really like And I, it's usually socks. I've got a pair of socks that I like to wear for meetings. I'm kind of weird. I'm going to quit talking now. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Back to the medical news on a Thursday. Another study now that shows you can eat this specific thing to reduce your risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. You ready for this one? Okay. This one is a 25-year study of 88,000 healthy women, they found that those who followed the so-called DASH diet, you know what that is? No. It's heavy in fruits and veggies, whole grains, low-fat milk, and plant-based protein and light on meat, they were 24% less likely to have a heart attack, Oh. 18% less likely to have a stroke. Really? While they only studied women, experts say the same diet would most likely be beneficial for men. So the DASH diet, they call it. And again, what that is... Uh, is heavy in fruits and veggies, whole grains, low-fat milk, plant-based protein, light on the meat. Um, okay, that sounds... Why do they call it the DASH diet? I don't know. Anyway, there you go. Interesting stuff. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. Do you like fun t-shirts? Our friends at 80s Tees have a bunch of fun designs from the movies and pop culture. This month, we are giving you a chance to win a $25 credit to buy the t-shirt you like with designs from Star Wars, Superman, Ghostbusters, Deadpool, and hundreds of others. Sign up to win a $25 credit. Register for free right now at winthisonline.com. We will select two winners at the end of this month. You could be one of them, but only if you register at winthisonline.com. It's not just criminals who make mistakes, Heidi. Sometimes judges do, too. How horrible is this? In Tampa, Florida, 47-year-old Leonard Brown spent 10 years too many in prison because a judge made a mistake on the paperwork. Poor Leonard spent more than half of his life behind bars after Circuit Judge Henry Lee Coe, known for dishing out tough sentences, wrongly sentenced him to 99 years on a robbery conviction that should have brought a maximum of 15 years. Wow. A fellow inmate who once worked for a law firm discovered the error in the file last year and helped Leo get into the court where he was finally set free last Friday and walked from the prison into the arms of his family. He said, I thank my family for sticking by me all these years, especially my mom. So he had a robbery charge and there was a mistake in the paperwork where they put in 99 years, even though the state maximum penalty was 15 years. So Hmm. he'd been there 25 years. Wow. So he had 10 extra years. He was in prison for 10 extra years. So I wonder if there's some sort of compensation then for that, you know, because you hear about that. Oh, I'm sure he's going to be going after compensation. And you know what? He should. Yeah. If he was incarcerated for 10 years of his life, that he he will never get back. Think about what 10 years would be worth. Right. That's insane. Uh, And I'll tell you, the best thing to do if you don't want to lose out on your freedoms, don't break the law. I mean, just don't. Absolutely. Because then you don't have to worry about even losing one year of freedom. Right. But but, uh, yeah, it would really stink to have an extra 10 years. You know, that just wouldn't be good at all. So I'm really happy that it ended the way that it ended. And, And there was another inmate in the prison with him that had worked at a law firm that happened to be in prison. I'm not exactly sure what they did. I'm guess <laughs> embezzlement, maybe. I have no idea. Anyway, they uh, were the ones that said, hey, let's let's appeal this, and I think we can fight and get you out of here. And he's out now, so that's awesome. That could have maybe even been our good news for the day. That could have been what? good news. We even have gooder news than that. Gooder? It's better than that. I mean, it's better than gooder. It's good, and it's on the way. 
This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap this program up with some good news. And I think this is good news. It's a really clever idea. And this is something that in our family we take very, very seriously, drinking and driving. My wife lost her niece, or not nieces, her cousins, to a drunk driver. So, you know, and that was many, many, many years ago. Uh, but that's a sad thing. Don't drink and drive. It's a bad idea, isn't it? It's a very bad idea. Terrible idea. You know, have a designated driver. Heidi's the designated drinker. Uh, I'm the designated driver. That's we right. got a good it little system. Well. Work out a system like that. But there's a bar in Los Angeles that has a new way to deal with drunk driving. When you use their restroom, when you look into the, the mirror, instead of seeing your own likeness when you look back into the bathroom mirror, patrons see a man looking back at them in blue prison overalls. The man shares his tragic story and warns them not to make the same mistake he did by driving drunk. The public service announcement is aimed at building new momentum in the fight against drunken driving. The message is, pun intended, quite sobering. And it's been working really well. Huh, there are people clever. who would have most likely driven home that come out and say, hey, can I, uh, can I call a cab? I'm going to just get a ride. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I've got a link to this story at Facebook.com slash John and Heidi. Uh, don't drink and drive. That is such a bad idea. Terrible idea. And I've got friends who've been in drunk driving accidents, and I've, we've, we know people who lost their lives. We had a dear friend that was a neighbor that was drinking and driving and died. Thank goodness the people in the other car didn't, but he was gone because of it. So it's just, it's a bad decision. And I know usually it's, you know, it's a decision that's made when you're not really thinking clearly, but just make sure that you know that, because if you know that, and it's something that you know for sure in your heart of hearts. Hopefully, when you are under the influence, you won't be doing something like that. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you again for joining us for a fun-filled, action-packed Thursday edition of the John and Heidi Show. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. And your bonus break is brought to you by WinThisOnline.com. It's a new month. We got some new stuff. Mall of America is on there. Whoa, oh, man, that's going to be a fun trip. That is. And here's the cool thing. We're actually making the trip, too. We're going to Mall of America. We get to do all these things. So what all is included in this? Uh, you've got Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon Universe. Universe, which is all the rides. It's a Moose, wristband for all the rides. Moose Mountain Mini Moose Golf. Moose Mountain is mini, mini Golf. And then... Uh, and then it's oh, also bowling, got the Sky bowling deck. at the Sky Deck. Oh, and that's yeah. all in the Mall of America. Yeah. So once you get to the mall, you can do your shopping, but you can also have all kinds of fun. So you can make it a whole weekend. And here's the beauty of this. We've got more than one prize, so we're going to do a weekly winner. So go on there right away this week, and we'll see if we can make you a winner. And then, hey, maybe you can coordinate it, and we can go at the same time, and we can meet up at the Mall of America. How fun would that be? Go and play mini golf together. Learn more at winthisonline.com. An unnamed 47-year-old man from Ho, Germany, faced a parking fine of $98. or ten- Oh, we talked about this. This was yesterday. <laughs> I'm going to just pretend like I didn't do that. Uh, he was the one that said, I'd rather just go because I need some peace and quiet. <laughs> uh, let's see. In Britain, a sign was posted along the motorway A14 near Cambridge warning drivers that thieves were in the area. Unfortunately, after being up for about an hour, the sign was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. Uh, police in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, were called to break up a fight between two six-year-old boys. What were they fighting over? A pacifier. <laughs> Six-year-olds? Two six-year-olds fighting over a pacifier. Oh, my gosh. Hey, in Nontoma, Kansas, it is illegal to throw a knife at anybody wearing a striped shirt. So I think you might want to wear striped (laughs) shirts if you go there. Gary, Indiana, it's illegal to attend a theater within four hours of eating garlic. So that's an interesting law right there. Uh, Two plumbers in Calgary, Canada, found a gold bar worth $50,000 while renovating a bathroom. Wow. They uncovered the valuable bar after tearing up a bathtub. Plumber Aleph Babul says, who stores gold bars under their bathtub, right? Kind of crazy. The bar was returned to the owners of the home, which I think was the right thing to do. So that's really cool. They were in there and they found a a gold bar worth $50,000. 
dollars. That's insane. That is insane. That's going to do it for your bonus break. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show, brought to you, uh, the bonus break anyway, by winthisonline.com.